Welcome to Yawkey Way and Fenway Park for game one of a three-game series between the Detroit Tigers and the Boston Red Sox. Hi again, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo, and welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, the Red Sox, with the victory yesterday against the White Sox, end up sweeping the White Sox and now have a five-and-a-half game lead atop the American League East as they begin this series against the Tigers. Red Sox have played great baseball, winning seven of their last eight games, and during that time, their offense has outscored opponents 49-22. to Sox are now a season high, 26 games over 500, their highest mark since September 9th of 2011, and the sweep of the White Sox, first sweep for the Sox since July, 30th through August the 1st of the Mariners. Stephen Drew picked up his 11th home run yesterday, and Jacoby Ellsbury stole his major league leading 51st base. We welcome in John Risch, and John, it appears the Red Sox offense is back on track, and so is David Ortiz. It was a good weekend for the offense. It was a good weekend for David Ortiz as well. A lot of the talk, in fact, coming into the series was the Ofer. He was 0 for 22 heading into Friday night's game against the White Sox. Made it out in his first at bat, but since then, he has been on a tear. He's been very patient at the plate, drawing four walks over a stretch in which he has gone five for eight. And he's also driven in six runs as well. We know how important David Ortiz is to the middle of this lineup. It was a big point of discussion last week, his struggles, but he seems to be right on track as this team heads into the month of September. And there's no doubt they are going to need Big Poppy to be the Big Poppy of old. Well, on the mound today for the Tigers is Doug Fister. On the mound for the Red Sox is John Lackey. And, of course, Lackey's number is not indicative of the way that he has pitched this season as he comes in at 8-12 and 12 with a 3.99 earned run average, 6-2 and two lifetime against the Tigers. We're back with the first pitch from Fenway right after this. and more. Kia of New England, Dunkin' Donuts, your Northeast Mazda dealers, McDonald's of Boston, and by Southwest Airlines. Well, welcome you back to Fenway Park. Cloud covered here at the moment and precipitation free at the moment, which is a key is apparently you may have some showers on its way here to Fenway Park in the near future this afternoon. 80 degrees as we get things started. A little bit on the sticky side. Breeze out to left at 6 miles per hour. There is a chance for thunderstorms and a band of showers that is not that far away as the Red Sox take the field this afternoon. As they do, let's check out the visiting Detroit Tigers starting nine on this junior announcer day. Thank you, Mr. Rosello. Hi, I'm David from Southern Massachusetts. Building off the Tigers, center fielder Austin Jackson, and right fielder Tory Hunter. 
at first base, Prince Fielder. The DH, Victor Martinez. In the outfield, Andy Dirks. Second baseman, Omar Infante. At third base, Don Kelly. The catcher, Alex Avila. In batting lines, the shortstop, Jose Iglesias. Nice job, David, as John Lackey on the mound today for the Red Sox. He is making his 25th start of the season. 8 and 11 coming in with a 3.19 earned run average. 155 innings, 134 strikeouts coming in, and opponents hitting at 250 against John Lackey. Now the Red Sox defense is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Will Middlebrooks at third base with Stephen Drew at shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second base, and Mike Napoli back at first base after having yesterday off. Up to right in the outfield, Daniel Nava in left, Jacoby Ellsbury in center, and Shane Victorino around in right. As Jared Saltalamacchia catching again today for the Red Sox as he catches John Lackey. And the umpiring crew, Eric Cooper, has a play today calling the balls and strikes with Paul Schreiber at first base, the crew chief, Jeff Kellogg at second base, and Angel Hernandez is the umpire at third. Today's game is available in Spanish by pushing the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Well, the Red Sox fresh off a sweep of the Chicago White Sox and a much different looking team coming in here today and the Detroit Tigers a very good team and perhaps a team the Red Sox could see in the postseason. It is one of those potential playoff previews right Don but I mean look at the contrast between the White Sox and the Tigers and it really starts with their lineup. The White Sox are for lack of a better way of describing it, offensively challenged. Not so for the Tigers. They can slug with the best of them, even without Miguel Cabrera in the lineup today. Although Cabrera is a big omission, he's the best offensive player in baseball, I think. Well, ready to go here, day baseball on this Labor Day. As Austin Jackson stands in on the right side for the Tigers. First pitch of the ball game is going to just miss for ball one. Austin Jackson, a 270 hitter to start the day with 11 home runs and 38 runs batted in. As he takes the strike that time, and it's one and one. And John Lackey has pitched so well, but does not have much to show for it, especially record wise. There's a pitch will miss outside to him. Now John Lackey is a poster boy for those who believe that pitchers wins and losses are not very indicative of how a pitcher has actually performed. This is lined to left and is going to get in towards the corner. Austin Jackson has good speed. He's headed to second base without a problem standing. With a double to begin things here in the top half of the first inning. So a fast start for the Tigers. That pitch was down. It was either at or maybe even a bit below the knees, but Jackson went down and got it. He's developed into a really nice player for the Tigers. You'll recall he was part of that Curtis Granderson deal originally coming over from New York. So Jackson in scoring position at second base, and here's Torrey Hunter at kind of a tough first half, has picked it up in the second half. 304 average, 16 homers, and 71 runs driven in. He'll take strike one. Almost a career resurgence for Torrey Hunter. An all-star again this year. Some people were wondering how much did Hunter realistically have left in the tank. Did not look particularly good over the past couple of years with the Angels. As the pitch will miss outside. And it's a ball and a strike. Selected as an all-star this year, representing the American League and the Tigers. His fifth career all-star selection. One one pitch is swing and a miss. Good biting slider that time that he couldn't catch, and it's one and two. And nothing that Jackson is going to be able to do with that pitch. That's a good offering from Lackey. Swing and a foul tip. Strikes him out. First strikeout of the day for Lackey. So Hunter strikes out. There's one away here in the first. 
Good velocity on the fastball from Lackey. Challenged him inside the zone, and he swings right through. Just barely foul tipping it into the middle of the catcher. Pitch on Nesson is brought to you by Amica. Amica Insurance, great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. And one out, one on for Prince Fielder. Hey, 269, 21 home runs, 92 runs batted in. And swinging at the first pitch as he fouls it back. Certainly unusual to see Fielder without having Miguel Cabrera in the lineup along with him. So the last 15 games for Prince at 357. But there is a chance we could see Miguel Cabrera in this game available on the bench today. May come in in a pinch hitting role if necessary. Fly ball hit out to left center field. Ellsbury has it sized up and makes the catch on the base of the warning track for the second out. No advance for Austin Jackson. Two down. Here comes former Red Sox catcher, first baseman Victor Martinez. I think this Tigers team is deeper and better than the team that they took to the postseason last year. As Jim Leland gets Victor Martinez back, his rotation has been much stronger this year. Max Scherzer has been off the charts good, even though he's coming off a tough outing. Verlander in the mix. The guy we're going to see today, Doug Fixter, in the mix. I mean, this is a very good team. A lot of teams should be as scared of the Tigers. Think about that. Justin Verlander is in your staff, and he has not been your best pitcher this year. That's a pretty scary proposition in a short series when you look at how well Scherzer has pitched all season long. Numbers for Verlander. Kind of average for him to say the least. I mean, he is used to being well above average on a yearly basis, coming off a terrific year last year. Now, Verlander pitched very well yesterday, seven shutout innings against the Indians. That's a game Cleveland would eventually win. Verlander obviously not factoring into the decision. Can't wait for this. We're going to see Lester and Scherzer tomorrow night. You know, look at the numbers for Max Scherzer. 19 and 1 coming in again. He is off a tough outing last time out. John Lester be looking for his 13th win. As that is up and into Victor Martinez. It's gone by quickly, but Jim Leland is in his eighth season as the manager of the Tigers. Had some very successful teams last year, of course, uh, with Detroit. Had the chance to. See the Tigers take on the Oakland A's in the postseason last year, and Jim Leland is as good as there is in the major leagues as a manager. Has been for a long time. Jeff Jones is pitching coach. And this Tigers team now running away with the American League Central, which was tight for much of the year, but uh, the Indians have now fallen seven and a half games back of the Tigers and just wrapped up a series between the two teams and and the Tigers came here last night. On the ground right side diving as Pedroia gets up plenty of time to get Victor Martinez. Nifty play turned in by Dustin Pedroia to end the inning. Ellsbury will lead it off when we come back.
in the first inning and the Red Sox coming up in the bottom of the first inning to face Doug Fister. His number is brought to you by Nissan. His 28th start of the year. He's in an 11-7 with a 3.81 earned run average. 172 at two-thirds innings, 127 strikeouts. Opponents hitting at 283 against Fister. As he gets the nod today for game one of this three-game series. Jacoby Ellsbury, Shane Victorino, Dustin Pedroia here in the first and Ellsbury left yesterday's game, bit of a sore thumb. He had got jammed a few times and it started to swell a little bit. And so he ended up leaving yesterday's game early, as did Shane Victorino. But both are back in the Red Sox starting lineup today. So that's certainly a good sign. Ellsbury hitting just under 300 at 299. Seven homers and 50 runs batted in. Now, first couple of things you notice about Fister right away, he's a huge guy, 6'8", long arms. You think throws hard? No, not the case at all. His fastball, 89-90. Extremely good pickup for the Tigers as it worked out. The Mariners would certainly still love to have Doug Fister as it's worked out. He's been a big part of what the Tigers have done successfully. I don't think the Mariners quite realized what they had at the time when they made the deal. They thought that they were selling high on Fister. Little did they know how well he would perform for the Tigers immediately after the trade. This one tap foul. Still two and two. Not overpowering, but excellent control. And he'll get a lot of ground balls. It's now his third season with the Tigers. Last year was an even 10 and 10. That's after going 8 and 1, going over to the Tigers initially. First three seasons in the majors for Fister was spent as a member of the Seattle Mariners. Two two pitch. Ellsbury a check swing foul. Fourth start of his career today for Fister at Fenway Park. One and two his record. As he elevates and misses and this the bat will extend to a ninth pitch. And one and two here with a 4.24 earned run average in his career at Fenway Park. Jeff Jones, the pitching coach for the Tigers. And Ellsbury works a lengthy walk here down to first base. And junior announcer today from Fenway. Check out the Red Sox starting nine brought to you by New England Chevy dealers. Thanks, Mr. Arcillo. Hi, I'm Elizabeth from Sudbury, Massachusetts. Leading off for the Red Sox, the center fielder, Jacoby Ellsbury. In right field, Shane Victorino. The second baseman, Dustin Pedroia. The DH, David Ortiz. In left field, Daniel Nava. At first base, Mike Napoli. The catcher, Jared Saltalamaghia. The shortstop, Stephen Drew. And batting ninth, the third baseman, Will Middlebrooks. Nice job, Elizabeth, as Shane Victorino stands in. And maybe the Red Sox sporting the high socks now that Dustin Pedroia started yesterday. I don't think there was any doubt that Dustin is a trendsetter. He sets the pace fashion wise. So Shane Victorino wearing the high socks and of course after the successful day yesterday you could count on the fact that he was going to have him high today and Victorino hitting a hand with the pitch as he heads down to first base that hurt. Looked like it was his right hand. You just hope it didn't get caught up against the bat. Maybe the a little bit below, yeah. below the wrist along the forearm. Boy, he's getting banged up, huh? Yes, he is. Well, the way he plays gets him banged up quite a bit, too. Running into walls on a regular basis. We've seen that a lot this year. When he plays the game, but uh, no defending that one right there. As the Red Sox have had the first two reach a walk and a hit batter. 
There's Dustin Pedroia stands in now hitting at 300 with eight homers and 76 runs batted in. He'll take strike one. Got that protective shin guard on the inseam. The lower leg there on the left side down by his ankle. And Dustin takes strike two. And we talked about Fister's great control. He starts with a walk and then hits a guy. But hitting guys are not that unusual for Fister. He's hit at least one guy in 12 of his 28 starts. And that is 16 hit batsmen now this season. And dealing with Pedroia, who's hit safely in 15 of his last 18 games. Ground ball back to the mound. Could be two to second for one. On to first. It is two. So one to six to three on the double play, and Fister needed that as Ellsbury takes third base. Let's check out the Tigers defensively. It's brought to you by Verizon Fios. Well, Don Kelly at third base. Old friend Jose Iglesias at shortstop with Omar Infante at second. Prince Fielder at first base. Left to right of the outfield, Andy Dirks, Austin Jackson, and Torrey Hunter. With Alex Avila doing the catching for Doug Fister. And we told you Fister gets an awful lot of ground balls, a very high percentage. That is the 22nd double play that opponents have hit into against Fister this season and is a much higher rate than the average major league pitcher. Well, now at third base for Boston is Jacoby Ellsbury for David Ortiz who dances out of the way of a pitch down and in. David did 315 24 homers 85 runs batted in. Two for three in yesterday's game with a double and three runs batted in. All part of an offensive attack for the Red Sox against the White Sox. Swing and a miss. And it's one and one. He's taking that pitch in again, two and one. He hits his last three at bats with two outs and runners in scoring position. Overall, at 271 in that category. And now two hits shy of 2,000 in his career. Could be done today. Swing and a miss and a fastball. Sneaky fast there, and it's two and two. It just high, full count. Did you see the happy reunion earlier today, Don, between D'Angelo Ortiz and Victor Jose? I did, yes. <laughs> Two best buddies back together again. Yes, they're very close. Of course, when Victor was here, teammate of David Ortiz's, and they're back together again today. Rain starting to fall here at Fenway Park. There's Ortiz, chops one down the first baseline, picked by a Fielder. He'll flip to Fister for the out. That ends the inning. Three to one on the put out. We head to the second inning. No score from Fenway.
The Red Sox actually have won the last four day games. They have the major league best 25 and 12 record in day games. And manager John Farrell said the reason behind that is probably the depth of the organization. He said usually day games are coming after night games and being able to go to get some key players off of their feet and go to other accomplished major league players is a luxury that the Red Sox have this season. Don. Well, it has been amazing, whatever the reason. Red Sox have won their last four day games, and as Jay mentioned, Major League Best 25 and 12 during the day. Red Sox 3.11 earned run average in day games. Tops in the American League, only second in the majors behind the Dodgers, who have a 2.46. And Andy Dirks leading it off here in the second inning. Foul it back. We saw a light rain hit towards the end of the last inning, and Seems like it's going to be a little touch and go here throughout the afternoon. I took a look at the radar, Don. I think we're okay for the very immediate future. Okay. No stoppage right now. I can't make any promises for mm -hmm. a little while for now. Well, how long are we talking here? Let's, uh... At least five, ten minutes. Oh, good. That's a big window. The ground ball right side. Pedroia and a couple of bounces. Fires to first to get Dirks. Four in a row retired by John Lackey. Well, MLB.TV celebrates 11 years with low, <laughs> new low yearly prices. Watch out of market games live on over 350 supported mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. MLB.TV. Baseball everywhere. MLB is going to be really pleased that I'm handing out <laughs> completely free MLB.coms. That is not the case. It is not... Uh, no yearly prices. They're just low yearly prices. I'm sure it'll work out well. You can redeem <laughs> your coupons by sending them to Don Orsillo, <laughs> care of Nesson. It could be alarming. Omar and Fonte will take a pitch outside and low. Five gamer for Infante coming in. Seven for his last 19 during that stretch. It's a fly ball out to left center field. And Ellsbury is there to make the catch. Two down in the second inning. Well, you hate for the rain to be any kind of factor because you get two very good starting pitchers going head to head here today. And the last thing you want to do is lose either one of them in this scenario that may have some sort of delay that is on the uh, cusp here of happening. Yeah, I, I think that they're going to be able to get at least a significant portion of this game in. If if they can't get the entire game in, let's hope they get the entire game in without interruption. But this is Detroit's last trip. So today, tomorrow, and Wednesday, that's it. And Don Kelly stands in and takes strike one. Third baseman who hits at 235 coming in with five homers and 22 runs batted in. And foul straight back. John Lackey has come out pounding the strike zone. 24 pitches, 17 strikes. First pitch strikes to four of six. And quickly strikes out Don Kelly. Second K of the day for Lackey. A one, two, three inning in the second. Daniel Navo will lead it off when we come back.
ECU. That's his pregame coverage of the Sox begins an hour before every game. ECU Digital Federal Credit Union banking the DCU way. Well, we head to the bottom of the second inning back at Fenway Park without a score. Daniel Nava, Mike Napoli, and Jared Saltalamaki is scheduled to bat against Doug Fister. As Nava hits at 294, 10 homers and 56 runs batted in. Nava had a very good August, hitting at 396 in 17 games in the month of August. Sold hitless here yesterday, going 0 for 3 in the finale against the White Sox. Outside for ball three, three and zero. Oh. Ball four and a four pitch walk to begin the second inning. So Fister has walked the first batter in each of the first two innings that he has faced. Recipe for disaster. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, Fister's command is off. That last pitch actually was a strike. It was not called a strike, but he missed his target so badly. The catcher was set up outside. And he missed down and in. And on three and zero, oh, when you miss the glove like that, you're not going to get the benefit of the doubt. So Nava's on to begin things here in the second. Brings up Mike Napoli. 249, 17 homers and 76 runs batted in. We had yesterday off and back in there today, and he's featuring the high socks as well. Two and oh, and this will bring a veal out to talk to Fister and Jeff Jones, the pitching coach, is coming out as well. Now, have you ever gone with a high sock look yourself, Don? Uh, no, I have not. I mean, I won't be here tomorrow, <laughs> but you and Eck would look great. <laughs> well, I remind you to head to the fifth annual Fenway Park Bridal Festival on Sunday, September the 8th, with special guest Randy Finoli from Say Yes to the Dress. The event features wedding professionals from across New England to help you plan your perfect day. Couples will also have the chance to enter a free raffle for the opportunity to win one of four wedding ceremonies at Fenway Park. Visit our Tickets are now available at RedSox.com slash bridal or call 617-226-6792. Lead runner on here for Boston in the second inning and Mike Napoli the batter head on the count 2-0. That's a strike in. It's 2-1. Mr. coming in with an 11 and 7 mark, a 3.81 earned run average. Into his 28th start of the year. A little bit high for ball three. will take it and it's ball four back to back walks given up by Fister. Three walks in an inning plus now allowed by the Tigers starter. And that will give Jared Saltalamaki a chance to do some damage. I told you last outing. Well, Fister was not very good. He went five innings, giving up 13 hits and seven runs. But in that outing, he didn't walk anybody. And this is very unusual for Fister. It's definitely out of character. His 30th pitch is in there for strike one to Salta Lamakia. Salta Lamakia is a guy that's gotten him in the past. He's five for eight career off of Fister, including a home run. Nava at second, Napoli at first. And that's in there for strike two. And 
Mr. is limited left handers to a 256 batting average. Mention the numbers against Mr. Fusalta Lamakia. In the dirt and gliding to his right is Avila. That is unusual for Fister. You mentioned his effectiveness against lefties. He's been somewhat of a reverse split guy, but that's just been this season. Career numbers, he's been equally effective against righties and lefties. Close pitch doesn't get credit for it, and it's two and two. Well, these three walks in an inning plus ties a season high for him. He does not have an out here in the second inning as he tries to grab his bearings. Saltanamaki on the ground right side and Fonte to second for one to first for two. Good acrobatic play from Iglesias and for the second straight inning, Fister has been able to induce a key double play. Well, the Tigers have really enjoyed the play of Jose Iglesias since getting him from the Red Sox. Yeah, he went airborne to clear the bag and get the relay throw over to first. That's a pretty athletic play. Watch where his knees are when he releases the ball. He has been everything the Tigers hoped he would be since coming over in the deal. A two down Nava at third base and Stephen Drew standing in. And he takes strike one. Drew asking about where that pitch was. 248, 11 homers and 54 runs batted in. Middlebrooks sporting the high socks waiting on deck. Now two outs and runners in scoring position. Drew has been good in this category. Getting at 306 coming into this at bat. He's got Nav at third base with two down. And a fly ball to center field playable for Austin Jackson. Fister has walked three through the first two innings and has been unscathed. It is scoreless at the end of two. have had the better opportunities so far but have been unable to score they have left Jacoby Ellsbury at third base in the first Daniel Nava third base in the second and 
No score as we head here into the third inning. Alex Sevilla to lead it off here for the Tigers. Jose Iglesias and Austin Jackson face John Lackey has given up only one hit for the first two innings and get strike one in there to Avila. Last we saw the Tigers Avila was on the DL. Sox did not have the chance to see him last time. It's a 207 nine homers and 39 runs batted in. And stated from the DL prior to Tuesday's game. Down 0 and 2. And he's hit a 294 since the All Star break with three homers, 18 runs batted in, and 20 games since the break. A protective swing, fouling it off to the left out of play. And he's been better offensively as of late, Don, but if you look at his numbers on balance on the season, they're really not that impressive. An on base percentage of under 300. Strike three call. Avila knew it. Takes with him the third strikeout for John Lackey of the day. So one down, and Jose Iglesias coming up for the first time in a Tigers uniform. Lacey is sitting at 319 combined between Boston and Detroit and promptly lines one into left field. Now over to play it back to the track and the wall and heading for second is Iglesias. Throw's going to be not in time. Slides in with a one out double. Second Tigers hit of the day and Iglesias wasn't waiting around. And he's always been aggressive at the plate. We've known that. And Middlebrooks was in at the corner. And Iglesias has been getting infield hits all season long. But he was thinking double right out of the box. There was no doubt in his mind that two was a possibility. Hard around first. Nava did the best he could once he got to the ball, but still in easily at second. Second double of the day for the Tigers. Austin Jackson had doubled in the first. And was left there as there is strike one to Austin Jackson. Jackson two for three yesterday against the Cleveland Indians in the final game of that series. Kobe Ellsbury coming in to get some sun classes in behind second base. Sun was not here a moment ago now darting its way through for the moment. I told you, Don, I looked at the radar. We're good for now. The whole thing is, though, the now part is very iffy on your part. Don't we, you we, trust we, me? Well, I do. I do. But how long is now? Like now? Now is right minutes? now. now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> About 20 minutes from now. Well, I can't gonna... tell you what's going to happen oh. in 20 minutes. Now, right now, it appears to be okay here at Fenway Park. It's sunny. We did have a, a light rain shower here at the end of the second inning. Salt Lamaki requests time, gets it from home plate umpire Eric Cooper. Dare I say it matches your jacket. <laughs> Last day for the uh, the colorful jackets of the year. We had the blue one the other day to get that out of the way, and now today the yellow, and that that's it. That's a wrap. That's it. Is uh, Labor Day today? We'll go with darker colors beginning tomorrow. When do the open houses start? After the postseason? <laughs> yeah. It's all about location, location, location. A gentleman downstairs asked me if I was going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. <laughs> In the dirt, and it is blocked by Salta Lamacchia. Evens at two and two, no advance for Glacies at second base.
Swing and a miss. And Austin Jackson chases after that pitch. He was up from Lackey, who's already got four Ks in the game. We sent it down to Jenny Dell. Well, Don, you were just talking about it, but you truly have been rocking the wardrobe department this Labor Day weekend. Aside from today's beautiful suit, there's still a lot of talk about that blue sports coat that you wore on Saturday. So for our AT&T Twitter poll question of the day, we're going to have fans text in their vote and find out Who's rocked the blue suit better? So A for you, Donatangelo himself. B for Richard Dawson of Family Feud. C for the character in Dumb and Dumber. And D for Psy of the Gangnam Style video. So some good options there. Message and data rates may apply. Vote throughout the game, through our post-game coverage. And this is a really important poll. We're going to get the final results tonight on Nesson Sports Today. Don? All right, Jenny. Thanks very much. That's tough competition. That right really there. is, yes. I didn't know about Cy from Gangnam Style. I, I know what it is. I've, I've heard it a thousand times, but I didn't know that he rocked the blue suit. Oh, yeah. That's new information. I didn't sure. know that. That's what I hear. <laughs> well, I'm interested in this poll all of a sudden. <laughs> the, the other polls, eh, not so much. <laughs> Have you ever been an option? No. Of course. I've never been an option. <laughs> This one is fouled off to the right by Tory Hunter. I kind of like Richard Dawson myself. Yes, he, you know, he because he he wears it well. I mean, that's the thing. There's something about a game show host in a blue jacket that says, "Hey, you know, look at me." And that was a long yeah. time ago. Yes. I, I I do have the Captain Stubing look that Jerry mentioned before many times, and the Lido deck. Swing and a miss as Tory Hunter was lunging after that pitch. One and two. Some very good sliders today from John Lackey, and that was another one. Now Lackey's dealing. You have to really be impressed with his stuff. He's getting some awkward swings and misses on pitches that are outside of the zone, too. And he worked his way around a double in the first inning. And yeah, trying to work his way around a double here in the third inning. Outside two and two. The two two pitch. In the dirt again. Now chasing is Tory Hunter, and it's a full count. And Tory Hunter and David Ortiz go back a long way. Of course, they're both members of the Minnesota Twins. Both prominent members of the Minnesota Twins. And of course, it was kind of a shame to see Tory Hunter leave the Twins because he was sort of the face at the time of the organization for a long time. And those were really his best years. His yeah. prime years were spent in Minnesota. He had productive years with the Angels, but his best years were with the Twins. And that was also when he was at his best defensively. At his prime, there may have been no better defensive outfielder in Major League Baseball than Tory Hunter. Settles in here with a full count, two down of the inning. Iglesias at second base. Hunter hits a little number. Out is Salta Lamacchia. Clears the runner and throws him out. And a lot of the gym again is lacking. We're through two and a half without a score from Fenway.
boy. Eh. Bottom of the third inning back at Fenway Park is Will Middlebrooks leads it off here in the Red Sox half of the third. Doug Fister back on the mound. And he grooves strike one in there. He's walked the first two batters that he has faced in each of the first two innings. In fact, he walked the first two he faced in the second. Brooks overall 221, 11 homers, 32 runs batted in. And a swing and a miss. Lunging cut there, one and two. Brooks since coming up is hit at 322. And the curveball that time fooled him. On the ground is short. Jose Iglesias is there. And quickly throws out Middlebrooks for the first out of the third inning. Red Sox Nation want the inside scoop from Dunkin' Donuts. Follow at Dunkin' Boston on Twitter for tweets about exclusive contests and news happening all over New England. Follow at Dunkin' Boston on Twitter today. The Red Sox run on Dunkin'. One out in the third inning, and it'll bring up Jacoby Ellsbury. Second time through now for the Red Sox against Doug Fister. Jacoby walked in the first inning and ended up being left at third base. It was exactly the type of a bat you look for from a leadoff hitter, especially to start the game. Saw nine pitches, kind of set the tone. Grounds one foul and is down 0 and 2. That's Ellsbury now. Victorino waiting on deck. One out here in the Boston third inning. That one almost hit him. Fister will hit guys already hit one in this game and has hit at least one batter and now 12 of his 28 starts this season second in the major leagues in that category. And the 15 hit batters overall are the most by a Tigers pitcher since Justin Verlander hit 19 batters back in 2007. In the air, down the left field line, out of play. A happy youngster there. And a fly ball to left field here at Fenway Park. A lot of souvenirs here in the last couple of days at Fenway. 2 2 pitch. And a swing and a miss. A fastball that gets Ellsbury. Sneaky fast. 89 miles an hour for Fister, but it gets by him, and that's the first strikeout for Fister. And he got him to expand the zone a little bit. That was up and out and just a bit outside. Enough off the plate, but Ellsbury couldn't reach it. All right, Fister is not going to blow you away at all with what he features. No. He'll get a lot of ground balls, but the fastball is 89. It's a sinking fastball, which is one of the reasons he gets so many ground balls. But you just see a guy that's 6'8", you automatically think hard thrower, and it's not the case. Go down for Shane Victorino. Takes the curveball for strike one. Victorino was hit by a pitch on the forearm in the first inning. He was the batter that Fister hit. Now he squibs one as Fister comes off the hill quickly. He'll apply the tag himself, and that will end the inning. A one, two, three, third inning. We head for the fourth at Fenway. No score.
put others first. Would be nice if your bank did the same thing with products that make life easier and a commitment to helping those in need. Here, your first Eastern Bank. Really welcome you back to Fenway Park. Some Aruba fans here for Xander Bogarts. Can you get me a good deal on a cruise to Aruba? <laughs> Prince Fielder leads it off here in the fourth inning. Fielder takes strike one. Fly out to center fielder Jacoby Ellsbury in the first inning. Preston like the calls. He looks back at home plate umpire Eric Cooper. Grounding one foul to the end of the Red Sox dugout, and it's 0 and 2. Now, we talked in the top of the broadcast. Fielder, by his standards, not really a great year. 21 home runs. Most teams would take it, but for Prince Fielder, that's a pretty low number. An OPS of just under 800. No two pitch driven towards the gap in right center field. That's going to get down. To the track and the wall is back to play it is Victorino and into second base with a leadoff double goes Prince Fielder. That is the third double of the game already for the Tigers. And once he gets going. Not a guy you'd want to try and slow down yourself. And Prince able to get a double here, and this is the third double of the day for the Tigers. The problem is they have not been able to advance that base runner at all from second base, and they're 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. Check swing, and it'll get away. Fielder will head for third. Just kind of jumped off Salt to Lamaki back into his right and in field with plenty an opportunity to get to third base. Pass ball is the call this time. I rolled far enough away that there was no play. The pitch was a called strike. Victor Martinez grounding out to Dustin Pedroia at second base. Back in the first inning, he's 0 for 1. Reaches out, taps one back towards the mound as Lackey will pick and throw, and it's going to hit the runner. But he was inside the line. We'll see what they do. He's going to be out, and the right call by Eric Cooper. He's going to bring Jim Leland out, but he was running inside the line. And when he hit the runner, he is automatically out. And a good call by Cooper. Jim Leland doesn't think so. And it's Victor Martinez. One to three is the put out on the play. We'll get a look. And Cooper had it right away. I don't think there was any doubt. He made the call pretty quickly. Look how far in he is. He's got his left foot on the grass when that ball hits him. Napoli made his own call right away. He had both feet on the grass before he angled back towards first base. That's an easy call. Napoli got hit with that. The umpire got hit with that. Paul Schreiber. Now the infield in and a little bloop to short right off the bat of Dirks. And in comes Victorino. Makes the catch on the run. Full board coming in. This is a guy who I believe yesterday's game with a hip contusion. All banged up with the hamstrings and he throws it into another gear and comes in to make that catch. His defense has come as advertised. We knew he was good. A center fielder by trade in right field at Fenway like many center fields. That's a good play. He has been fun to watch in 2013. So two down and Prince Fielder 90 feet away at third base. 
as Omar Infante now stands in. Infante flying out to the center fielder. Jacoby Ellsbury back in the second inning. Fielder at third with two down. And it's outside for ball two, two and zero. Oh. Tigers have been 0 for 7 with runners in scoring position. That's been a strength of Lackey's this year. He has been able to strand runners at a pretty high rate, 80 percent, well above the major league average. In the year to left center field struck pretty well Ellsbury headed back he'll have room he makes the catch on the dirt of the track John Lackey out of it again we're through three and a half no score from Fenway. Scoreless as we head to the home half of the fourth inning. Three, four, and five for the Red Sox scheduled in the inning. Dustin Pedroia, David Ortiz, and Daniel Nava to face Doug Fister. And first pitch strike from Fister, who has retired the last five Red Sox in a row. First pitch strike to nine of 12 Red Sox batters so far for Fister, who has walked three. And the remarkable part about it, Red Sox have had uh, four men on through the first three innings, but uh, none of them are base hits. Red Sox without a hit in this game. And they have three walks and a hit batter. Inside for ball two. Field lines. Ertz on the run is going to get there and make the catch. Hung up long enough for him to run over to the dirt of the warning track over there, and he makes the grab for the first out. Nessence coverage of Red Sox baseball is brought to you in part by Eastern Bank. You put your family first, job first, even your team first. Isn't it time someone put you first? Eastern Bank does just that. With products like Eastern Free Checking, here, your first. Eastern Bank. One down here in the fourth inning. 
And six in a row retired by Doug Fister as David Ortiz gets his second look at Fister today. And David grounded out to first base in the first inning. Did not like that strike call. Not at all. That's a pitcher's pitch. Down and away. If Fister's going to get that call all day, he's going to be pretty happy. Foul back, and it's 0 2. We talked about the weekend David Ortiz has been having. He's been feasting on right handed pitching. Look at that. Almost the entire zone, a hot zone against righties for Poppy. Of course, anything low, he's been eating it up. Anything in the middle of the zone, same story. David lets that go by, and it's a ball and two strikes. On deck for Boston, Daniel Nava batting out of the five spot today. In tight, and it's two and two. Send the second baseman Omar and Fonte into short right, but not a full shift here against Ortiz. He will pop it up in the infield. Prince Fielder coming from first base. On the grass will give way to Infante standing behind him who makes the catch. So two down in the inning. His Prince was all camped underneath and ended up being about three feet behind him. Ever find yourself guessing what you think is going to happen during every at bat? Well, there's an app for that. MLB Preplay is the official prediction game at Major League Baseball. It's free to download on iOS and Android. Download now at Nesson.com slash preplay and play along during every Red Sox game. Two outs here in the fourth inning, and it brings up Daniel Nava. Nava walked in the second inning. One of the three walks given up by Doug Fister. for Nava and the first hit of the day for Boston comes here in the fourth inning and Daniel Nava's got a base hit with two away and Nava extended the streak with the walk in his first plate appearance now a single he has reached in 37 consecutive starts didn't start every day but when he's been in the starting lineup he has continued to produce So Nava held on at first base by a fielder. Two down in the inning. Mike Napoli, the batter. Tried to hold up, but he goes around. On a curveball that time from Doug Fister. He'll take strike two. One strikeout so far for Doug Fister through three and two thirds innings. Just had a string of seven in a row, broken up by this base hit by Nava, and the only hit Reds, the Red Sox have today. And a swing and a miss. Napoli goes chasing and strikes out to end the inning as we have now played four.
Tonight, as we look at just how incredible Miguel Cabrera has been to the Tigers' offense, did you know that since 2005, Cabrera and the Yankees, Robinson Cano, are the only two players in Major League Baseball to least 1,600 hits and 800 RBIs. Of course, Miguel Cabrera on the bench today to begin this game and has missed three of the last four games as they try to get him ready for the postseason and healthy again and make him off the bench today if, if necessary as Don Kelly leads it off here for the Tigers 0 for 1 he struck out swinging in the second inning there's a pop up right side of the infield and Napoli takes charge and makes the catch third straight game that Cabrera has missed rumor has it he tried to talk his way to the lineup today but if you're Jim Leland and the Tigers I mean come on no you reason. are comfortably in front in your division he is by far your most important player it makes absolutely positively no sense to take any unnecessary risk. And the way things are going for the Tigers right now in the American League Central seven and a half game league again it gets to the point where they can set up everything that they want to set up for the postseason. A pitching standpoint. Alex Avila batting here with one out in the inning as he takes strike one. The only struck out looking in the third inning. Maybe the question for them is who does start game one. Mm -hmm. I know the year that Scherzer has had but I probably still give the ball to Justin Verlander. Yeah, I would agree as this one is grounded foul having seen Verlander pitch in two games last year in a five game series you have a chance to run him out a second time. The workhorse that he is a guy who can come back without any problem at all. The thing that's always amazed me about him is that he throws harder at the end of his outings than he does in the beginning. This guy can reach back and find 97 in the eighth and ninth innings. Pitch is high for ball one. He can do it seemingly at will at different points in the game. If he needs yep. 97 in the fourth, it's there. If he needs 97 in the eighth, it's there as well. And he needs it. Villa fouls it back, still down one and two. On deck, number nine man, Jose Iglesias. Now it is raining in New York as the Yankees and White Sox are in the midst of a delay. In that game, the Yankees have a one nothing advantage. One two pitch fouled off. Tonight, Tampa Bay will play at Los Angeles as the Rays continue their West Coast trip. And that's not gone well so far for Tampa. They've not won a game on that trip so far. They are over the last four. And as a result, the Red Sox with a five and a half game lead atop the American League East to begin the day. And Tampa Bay has got Chris Archer pitching tonight mentioned over the weekend when would Matt Moore pitch he didn't fare well in his rehab outing he is going back into the rotation he's scheduled to start tomorrow night for the Rays. It takes the 2 2 down and in full count. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up here. Okay, he got ahead 0 and 2 but a full count now. Being sidelined with concussion symptoms during the course of the year that have held him out. He fouls it back and the at bat continues. We'll start following Nesson on Twitter for the latest breaking news and programming alerts. It's all available on your computer and mobile device. Follow us on twitter.com slash Nesson. There's Miguel Cabrera. Bat in hand whenever called upon, and he can use it. 358 average, 43 home runs, and 130 runs batted in. Of course, won the Triple Crown last year. 
Well, the foul off to the left out of play, and this lengthy at bat continues. He was gaining quickly, too, on Chris Davis for the home run lead, the American League. We'll see how much he plays here in September if he can catch him. And there's four back of Davis, who has 47. Miguel Cabrera with 43. Otherwise, he leads in batting average and leads in RBIs in 130 ribbies. And a 358 average to set the pace in the AL. Strike three call. Avila thought he had ball four, but he is rung up by home plate umpire Eric Cooper. That's the second time Avila has struck out. Fastball that time from Lackey, and Avila thought it was up and away. Last whiff was brought to you by Head and Shoulders. So two down, five in a row. Retired by John Lackey, and here's Jose Iglesias. Iglesias swung at the first pitch. His first time up and doubled into the left field corner. Numbers with the Red Sox beginning in 2011, total of 98 games, hit at 280. Iglesias did not offer, and it's two and one. And we've talked about the trade from the perspective of the three teams involved, but just for Jose Iglesias, personally, it's been a good opportunity because he's been able to play his natural position of shortstop every day. A little bloop to center field. Incoming is Ellsbury diving to make the catch. Head first dive for Jacoby Ellsbury. Well, he robs Iglesias. We're halfway through this one. Scoreless from Fenway. Last half of the fifth inning back at Fenway Park as Jared Saltalamacchia leads it off and lines one foul. One of the seats down the right field line for strike one. Saltalamacchia, Drew, and Middlebrooks anticipated here in the bottom of the fifth inning against Doug Fister. Salty will shoot it foul off to the left this time. 0 and 2. Bounced into a 4 6 3 double play in the second inning. One of two double plays today. Turn behind Fister, who's only given up one hit through the first four innings. Ball 
Popped up foul, out of play again. Well, Fister was wild early, uncharacteristic for him, but that strike percentage has slowly but surely been climbing back up. And you wonder if the Red Sox maybe missed an opportunity to get to him when he was a little off. Uh, he's now retired eight of the last nine batters he has faced since the back to back walks in the second inning. One two pitch. Sophomore thought about it but didn't go. We checked with Angel Hernandez. He said no two and two. So Angel got to stick around for Labor yeah. Day at Fenway. How about that? It's changed you don't crew. see that very often. It's part of the last crew that was here in the White Sox series. Strike three call. Salta Lamacchia back pedals out of the box. That's the third strikeout for Vister. Close the second. Got a second strikeout to end the fourth inning and now picks up his K here in a breaking ball. That was a curveball way up in the zone. Certainly not what Salta Lamacchia was expecting. Make insurance proud sponsor of the Mika Pit Zone. One down here in the fifth inning for Stephen Drew, who is 0 for 1. He flied out to center field in the second inning. Sweating on deck, bottom third of the Red Sox order batting in the inning, and Drew with a healthy hack, but it's a ball and two strikes. Strike three call. Drew didn't like it. That is three straight strikeouts now for Doug Fister. And two down here in the fifth inning as we check in with Jenny Dell. Hold on, I am so lucky to be here with our fan here today. She is 101 years old here today, Miss Viola Goodman. So you, we were just talking about it. You've been a fan for over 50 years, you were saying. You were able to go out on the field today. Where does this rank amongst your Red Sox memories? Well, I remember, you know, all the way back. Oh, you know. I, I, I say I love it. I love the Red Sox. It's one of my favorite teams. Whether you win or lose, it's my team. That's what we love to hear. And she was just saying whether they win or they lose, a favorite team. My favorite team. I don't care what team win, the Red Sox is mine. <laughs> That's what we love. And you could be anywhere on your 101st birthday, but you chose to be here at Fenway Park. Why is that? Because I, I love to see it. Because at home I wasn't doing that and I was going to watch it. I don't go out, I don't go nowhere if the race talk is playing. I stay up until, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, they on, I'm on. 2 a.m., so you're watching our West Coast games out there. Now, who is your all-time favorite Red Sox player? Now? Now, the past? <laughs> well, yes, and, um... Ortiz, maybe? Uh, Ortiz now because I have one on the shirt. She's wearing the Ortiz jersey right now. Well, thank you so much for being here. We want to wish you a very happy 101st birthday from Nesson and all of Red Sox Nation. Thank you for being here. Well, happy birthday. Here to Fenway Park, and Yaz was a good pick. Absolutely. David Ortiz as well. Stays up for the West Coast games. I know. So we have in the morning. I'm impressed. Yes. <laughs> And two outs here in the fifth inning. Will Middlebrook's batting here with a full count. And a liner in the left field. Well, Will Middlebrook says a two out base hit. Second hit of the day for Boston. Red Sox have not been able to do much with Doug Fister. Two down, Middlebrooks at first base, and the top of the Red Sox order, Jacoby Ellsbury coming up. So he made his presence felt with a good diving catch in center field. Ellsbury walked, 
was left at third base in the first inning struck out in the third inning and now his third plate appearance of the day against Doug Fister. He's a catcher talking about uh, in the fifth inning to end it on this flare to center field and Jacoby coming full more at first to make the diving catch and full extension. We've got a good jump good read on that ball. Some good outfield defense today. We had seen Shane Victorino make an outstanding play earlier in the game coming in on a fly to right. That time Ellsbury's turn. It's a pretty dynamic duo. Forget about the offense. Just think about it in terms of the ground they can cover defensively in right and center field. Mister wanted it, but it is ball two, two and one. To center field, Austin Jackson is out there, and he'll make the catch that ends the fifth inning. It's on to the sixth without a score from Fenway. Top of the sixth inning without a score. The two teams have combined for five hits. Been well pitched as we head into the sixth inning. And John Lackey back on the mound. His 67th pitch of his outing is going to miss for ball one. Top of the Tigers order. Austin Jackson leading it off here in the sixth inning. Jackson doubled in the first inning. Struck out swinging in the third. It's a fly ball to right field. Sending Victorino back. To make the catch for the first out of the inning. Well, Hassan Hess Express are proud sponsors of the Red Sox, and during the season, they'll donate $500 to the pediatric trauma program at Boston Children's Hospital for every home run hit by the Sox. To date, 70000 has been donated. Hassan Hess Express committed to helping the cause. One out in the sixth inning, seven in a row retired by John Lackey. And it brings up Tory Hunter, who is 0 for 2 today. And that's one up the middle, but Pedroia is there. Two down. And two outs here in the sixth inning. Let's check in on our poll. John Rich and see how we're doing here at the moment here. Whoa. Going very well so oh, far. This is a landslide. Is, I am very surprised by this. <laughs> Look at that. 59% for D.O. You know, I was nervous about was Richard Dawson because I mean he just has that look about it that it, it works. 
I might, I, have, I don't think I really might have voted for Richard Dawson. If I, <laughs> See, that's yes. what I'm saying. And you're sitting here. And two down in the inning as Prince Fielder stands in. Could be the backdrop too. I kind of use Fenway Park as a drop backdrop, uh, as for, you know, for a reason. Right. Well, I mean, we do. You probably should consider the demographic that right. we're getting to vote here. Well, look at that. You're up. You're up to 60 percent. We're jumping. We're jumping now. Things are happening as we sit here, and you can vote all day. Our AT&T poll question today. May have to break it out again. It's usually a one time a year thing. <laughs> Pitch in there for a strike to Prince Fielder. I, I wouldn't want it to lose its effectiveness. Yeah. So once a year is enough, is what you're saying? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> you know, Prince Fielder fly down to center in the first. He doubled in the fourth inning. He has not been behind too many so far in this game as he takes a little stroll here with a count of three and one. There's a ground ball and a couple of hops out to Pedroia. Backs up and throws out Fielder. Hockey has a one, two, three, sixth inning. He's retired nine in a row. No score for Fenway. Swing and a foul tip. Strikes him out. First strike out of the day for Lackey. Now Lackey's dealing. You have to really be impressed with his stuff. And John Lackey has retired the last nine Tigers in a row as we play along to the bottom of the sixth inning. Shane Victorino, Dustin Pedroia, David Ortiz to bat in the inning. Victorino hit by a pitch in the first inning, grounded out to first base in the third inning. And ahead 2 0. On the ground foul just above the Tigers dugout.
This will be the 90th pitch for Fister. And it's going to miss for ball three, three and one. By the Tigers dugout. Torino leadoff single to begin things here in the sixth inning. The third hit of the day for Boston. Well, there are only two home stands remaining this season, but you still have a chance to see your Red Sox at Fenway Park. The Red Sox play the Tigers through Wednesday to wrap up this home stand, then come home a week from Friday to play the Yankees, Orioles, and Blue Jays. Get your tickets now for these great matchups by calling 877 Red Sox 9 online, redsox.com slash tickets, or visit the Fenway Park ticket office. Shane Victorino with a leadoff single to begin things here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Brings up Dustin Pedroia, who is 0 for 2. There goes Victorino. Pedroia grounds one up the middle. A tag there for an out. A throw out there. Two down. What a play. And again, it's guess who? Jose Iglesias applying the tag on Victorino, who was stealing on the play. And then firing on to first to complete the third double play of the day for the Tigers. I'd like to see the replay again. I didn't think initially that Iglesias got him on the tag. They're trying to stay out of the double play, putting him in motion. Tough to tell there. He might have nipped the jersey underneath his armpit. Can't really see from that angle either. Glacius was in that position to make the play because he was coming over because of the stolen base. Now Doug Fister, who's a ground ball pitcher, has really got to love having Jose Glacius at shortstop behind him. As Ortiz now grounds one foul down by the tarp. He's getting a chance to play every day and getting it done at shortstop for the Tigers. And people who have watched the Red Sox aren't surprised when they see outstanding defensive plays for many others it can be eye opening to watch him play the position one pitch misses outside David foul tips it off of Vila and it's one and two and John Farrell was asked earlier today was it difficult to give up a guy like Iglesias and his response I think was pretty measured in that if you isolate it and just look at the individual player sure you don't want to give up a talent like that but when you take everything else into account the needs of the ball club what Jake Peavy has been able to give them and the depth of that position in the organization it made it a little bit of an easier deal to make. On the ground to first base, it is a fair ball and out number three of the sixth inning. Now quite a double play initiated by Jose Iglesias. Still scoreless at the end of six.
top half of the seventh inning, and what a well pitched ball game this has been. Some very good defense turned in on both sides as well. As Victor Martinez leads it off here for the Tigers and takes ball one. Victor has grounded out to second base, grounded back to the mound, and two at bats today. In there for a strike one and one. Ace ticket brings us the pitching line for John Lackey. Six plus innings, three hits, no runs. Hasn't walked anybody. And has struck out five today. Line down the right field line, a foul ball to the right of the pole down there. Well, for every Red Sox game that goes into extra innings or the Sox get a save, CBS Pharmacy will make a donation to Boston Children's Hospital towards a $25,000 donation this season. Martinez is slicing it foul, still one and two. Apparently still raining in New York as the Yankees had a one nothing lead over the White Sox. Some ominous clouds have been hanging around here at Fenway Park but so far so good. I'm happy to report we're still within our window. Nice. Down the left field line and that's going to get in. Homer goes Nava to play it. Martinez will hold on with a single, and that's the fourth hit of the day for Detroit. Well, it's time for a Toyota game break. Here's Tom Karen. Okay, Tom, thanks very much. Here we are scoreless. Lead runner on for the Tigers to begin things here in the seventh inning. And Andy Dirks will take a look at ball one outside. Dirks is grounded out to second, flied out to right. Foul down by the shoe tops, and it's a ball and a strike. Lackey with a strike percentage this afternoon, 68%. That's actually above his season average of 66%, which is above his career number. In fact, you've got to go all the way back to 2008, his second to last year with the Angels, for a season in which Lackey had a strike percentage that high. Part of the reason he's pitched so deep into games. Martinez takes off, swinging his dirts to hit a fly ball out to right center field. Back goes Ellsbury, and he can't get it. Into the triangle, it's going to bounce around a while. Victor Martinez coming all the way around from first base. Throw to the plate, it's going to be not in time. And the third base goes Dirks as the Tigers strike first and take a 1 0 lead. That ball carried a long way out to the triangle area in the 420 marker. And it works out to be. A triple for the Tigers and a run scored. That was a cut fastball and it hung, just caught too much of the plate. I thought that Ellsbury was going to have an opportunity to catch it. It's just that we've seen him run down so many balls over the years. Hit to one of the deeper part of the parks that you could possibly do without hitting it out. So one nothing Tigers lead infield in all the way around as Omar Infante swings through the first offering. Infante has done the same thing twice. That's fly out to center field and both times Jacoby Ellsbury up to the task.
Straightens him up with a 92 mile an hour fastball, two and one. So that single to begin the inning by Victor Martinez broke up a string of nine in a row, retired by John Lackey, and then Dirks follows it up with a triple. Victor Martinez had to come all the way around for first base. He was running on the pitch. Fly ball down the right field line. Victorino gives it a look, but that'll get into the seats. Now you see Victor is going. He slowed up and waiting to see where the ball was going to go, and he hung just short of second base. And then he had to turn it back on to hustle home. And not that close at the plate. And Fonte pops it up. Foul ground over his Napoli by the Red Sox dugout, and he'll have no play. Tigers trying to get that second run in with Dirks at third base and nobody out in the inning. Red Sox have the infield in. And a pop up foul again out of play. Fonte has been very good not only defensively as part of the middle infield for the Tigers along with Jose Iglesias. But in the last 81 games he's hit at 332. Takes ball three full count. Taking some time in between the hill, rubs up the new baseball, now comes back up top. Three two pitch. And that's ball four. He loses Infante, who heads down to first base. Still nobody out of the inning. We'll stay with Nesson later tonight for Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Jameson Coyle and Adam Pellerin bring you everything you need to know about the day in sports, including a report from Gillette Stadium as the Pats prepare for their season opener, final round coverage of the Deutsche Bank Classic, and Mike Salk and Rob Bradford in studio to debate their two sides. All that, plus a recap of the game here at Fenway, comes your way on our so after our Sox coverage on Nesson Sports Today. Don Kelly will take a pitch inside for ball one. Yeah, that's a pitch that could have easily been called a strike, but Lackey does not get the call. All of a sudden, Red Sox have action. Matt Thornton is first up in the Red Sox pen. The most pitches that Lackey has thrown in any inning today, and he does not have an out yet. He's had to work hard here in the seventh. The infield had been in all around, but now with the runner at first, they go back at short and second. Middlebrooks is way off the line at third, although he's got his toes at the edge of the grass. Fouled off to the left, two and one. And the pitches by inning. 93 total here with runners at first and third. Nobody out to run in for Detroit. And foul back, two and two. 
And seemingly for no rhyme or reason, it just lines up this way, game after game, time after time through the rotation. John Lackey seems to be the guy that consistently gets no run support. It's unbelievable. And Sox had some chances early, especially when Fister was struggling. He walked three in the first two innings and hit a batter. One part of the first two, Red Sox could not register a run. Outside for ball three, and all of a sudden now Lackey having some trouble with his control. Sixth three ball count of the day. And the walk of Infante was just his first walk of the day. Dirks at third and Fonte at first. And a chopper right side. Pedroia will throw to first for the out there. Throw to second base. Got to be a tag play, and it is. Double play. And Fonte went in strangely at second base with uh, not much in the way of any kind of major dive there to elude the tag. It's almost like he didn't know the throw was coming. A run does score. And the Tigers will take a 2 0 lead. And it was a tag play. The force was off. Pedroia looked at three different things here. He looks at the runner. He looks at the runner going home and takes the out at first. And a good play and a strong throw to Drew covering at second. He did, though. You're right. He appeared a little surprised when he was tagged out at second. So double play, two down, and it's 2 0 Detroit. Base is now empty. Alex Avila, 0 for 2. He has struck out twice today, went looking in the third, and struck out swinging in the fifth. Fly ball to center field. Ellsbury is there to make the catch that ends the inning, but the Tigers get two in the top of the seventh to take a 2 nothing lead. Three runs or less on three occasions. He'll be opposed by lefty John Lester. Lester's August DRA 2.97. His lowest DRA in month of the season. Lester has also won two of his last three starts. So they'll go head to head tomorrow. So we look forward to that. Pretty good pitching matchup today. So far from Lackey and Fister, although John Lackey has just been touched for two runs in the seventh inning to give the Tigers a 2 0 advantage. Red Sox trying to answer here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Daniel Nava, Mike Napoli, and Jared Saltalamaki at a bat in the inning. Curveball in there for strike one. 
Nava walked in the second, singled in the fourth. He's been on twice today against Fister. Fly ball hit towards right center field pretty well, and that is going to get down. Cut off out there by Jackson. And the second base goes Nava. has got himself a leadoff double to begin the bottom of the seventh inning. Second hit of the day for Nava. Third time he's been on base. And now might be time to keep your eye on Fister. He's closing in on 100 pitches. We start to see some action down in the Tiger bullpen. So Nava at second base, Mike Napoli the batter. Napoli walked in the second, struck out swinging in the fourth inning. And the first pitch ball to Mike Napoli. Double barreled action, Phil Koch, the left hander, Al Albuquerque, the right hander. Joaquin Benoit these days closing games for Jim Leland and Jeff Jones. For a strike one and one. Maybe you talked about the Tigers early in the season entering the year. That might have been the one question you had. Who was going to close for them? Otherwise, they didn't have too many question marks heading in. To the point where they brought Jose Valverde back for a stint. That did not work out. One one pitch outside for ball two. Batting with Nava at second base and nobody out as he takes a pitch just off the outside edge. Hundred and three today, reaching his average, still shy of his hundred and eighteen high on the year. And there's ball four. Napper will make his way down to first base. That's the first walk given up by Fister since the second and a season high. Fourth walk given up in his outing. Send it down to Jenny Dell. Well, Don, the Red Sox recently acquired 38-year-old John McDonald from the Phillies. He is a true utility infielder, 15 years experience, and has New England roots. Born and raised in Connecticut, a Providence College alumni. As we take a look at today's Geico quote of the day, and it comes from McDonald. About this whimsical year, it's fifth team this season. He said, I've been getting closer to home, going from Arizona to Pittsburgh to Cleveland to Philly to Boston. I'm inching my way home. It might be baseball's way of telling me something, but I'm not ready to listen. I'm just excited about it. Don, the next game McDonald plays in will be number 1,000 in his career. Well, he's had a very good career defensively over the years. I and mean, certainly more recently, I've seen a lot of him in Toronto prior to going on that tour that he's been on this season. <laughs> all over. And he's been all over the place. But if you had to pick a place for a veteran to finish up, boy, with a team close to home and an independent race. Perfect. You know, first and second, nobody out. Jared Saltalamaki, the batter. He's squaring, pulls back, gets away from Avila, but he tracks it down to advance for the base runners. Never thought about it. Depending on what happens here with Salt of the this could be it for Fister. You've got Drew on deck, and you should have the lefty Coke ready by then if you want him. Salt of the today has had the misfortune of bouncing into a 4 6 3 double play in the second. And struck out looking in the fifth. Bunting again, and this time gets it out there. Bill is going to third. A force out there. They get the lead runner. Good aggressive play from Avila jumping out there. And once it was called fair, he fired it down to third base for the force out. Now Saltamaki got it down, but not far enough away from home plate. To get the good sacrifice, he's just got to get it a little further out.
So first and second with one out. It brings up Stephen Drew. Drew all for two. He's flying out to center and struck out looking. And they're going to stick with Fister. Spins off the backside, no throw as Napoli gets back to the bag. In there for strike one to Drew. Time one and one. Nava doubles to be in the inning. Napoli with a walk. Saltalamacchia trying to sacrifice the runners over, but instead ends up putting it out in front of Avila. Gets the lead runner at third base and a force out. And Daniel Nava. Now Drew takes ball two, two and one. Albuquerque and Coke ready if they decide to go in that direction. They have not with Coke here initially. The left hander drew up. And a ground ball right side. Fielder will flip to first for the out there. And moving along, Mike Napoli to third. Drew retired at first as Salta Lamacchia takes second. Let's stay with Nesson after the game for WB Mason Extra Innings Live. Tom Karen and Tim Wakefield to break down the game, and Jenny will bring you Clubhouse Reaction. WB Mason Extra Innings Live. Can't go wrong when you buy right. WB Mason. So we talk it over here on the mound as they get ready to deal with Will Middlebrooks. And we'll see what Jim Leland does. Middlebrook standing in one for two. He grounded out to short in the third. Single to left field in the fifth inning. Gonna try to get Fister through this inning if he's unable to get Middlebrooks. He got Ellsbury waiting on deck. In there for strike one. Out of third base, it's picked there by Kelly. His throw in plenty of time, and Fister gets out of the jam. Red Sox strand the pair. It's two nothing Detroit at the end of two.
Ios. And by Toyota's official website for deals, by Toyota.com. Back at Fenway Park and back on the hill for the Red Sox is John Lackey. First pitch of the safe inning is in there for strike one. Jose Iglesias leading it off here for the Tigers. Iglesias doubled to left field in the third inning, flied out to center in the fifth. Now hits a fly ball to right field. It has Victorino ducking back for the first out of the inning. When our veterans return from Iraq and Afghanistan, a number of them suffer from post-traumatic stress and dramatic brain injury. The Red Sox Foundation's home base program treats them. We thank H.B. Hood for supporting the Red Sox Foundation's efforts. One out here in the eighth inning for Austin Jackson. He'll take strike one. Jackson doubled back in the first inning. Since then, he has struck out swinging and flied out to right. Phil Cook has now been joined by Bruce Rondon, who started the year as the closer for the Tigers. One one pitch. This is inside two and one. Like you had pitched six shutout innings into the seventh before giving up a single and a triple. And a double play ball scored the second Tigers run. It's the difference in the game. And again, another day in which John Lackey has not received run support from his Red Sox offense. Swing and a miss. Jackson goes up to try to get that two and two. Tory Hunter waiting on deck. 0 4 3 in the game is Hunter. And a foul off to the right out of play. This game summary is brought to you by Xfinity from Comcast. Fister seven innings, giving him four hits but no runs. John Lackey here working in the eighth inning has gone seven and a third, giving him five hits and two runs, and Nava's gone two for two. Another foul off to the right out of play. go they'll check no he did not says Paul Schreiber first base umpire and it's a full count now to Austin Jackson he usually looks closer on the replay but that one's pretty clear cut cut rather he did not offer at it Jackson lines this into left field for a base hit. So one out single second hit of the day for Austin Jackson. Let's send it down to Jenny. Well, Don, we want to remind our fans at home to vote in our AT&T text poll question of the day. A very important question here. It's about who can wear the blue suit the best. And as we take a look right now, it looks like, well, Don Orsillo, you are certainly winning. So reminding the fans to vote, 536-536. Continue voting throughout this game, through the postgame coverage. We'll have the results in Nesson Sports today. But, Don, I think we might know who the winner is here. All right. Thanks very much, Jenny. Hopefully we keep it going here. It is done for the year after this weekend. That's it. It is Labor Day. It's come and gone. Dark colors from here on out. What do you get if you win? It's a great question. Is there a prize? <laughs> At the moment, no. <laughs> and Tori Hunter batting here with one out and a runner at first base. Is outside for ball one. Maybe we could get you a blue bow tie to go with that it. Might be a nice touch. I've never worn a bow tie. Have you? I have not. 
Well, I've worn one no, with I take that I back, take yes, that back. I, with a tuxedo. Yeah. But it, That's you know, different. I attached it with a snap. It was not an actual. No, no, yeah, I can't put that together either. There's a runner at first. The pitch is low and outside, and the throw is going to be late. Almost came off the bag, though, as he went forward. I'm doing some push ups now is Austin Jackson. Stolen base. Couple of push ups. All on the scoring position. All on today's work. Pretty good jump. The tag almost actually helped knock him off balance, I think. While you're down there, why not? 2 0 pitch to Hunter. This is lined into center field, a base hit. Austin Jackson's going to be stopped there as Ellsbury gets it back in quickly and fires it to the plate. And as a result, taking second base alertly is Torrey Hunter. He saw the throw going to the plate, looked up and said, I'm going to take second base, and he did. The airmail the cutoff man. Napoli was there to try and cut it off on the other side of the mound. Well, John Farrell out to make the change here with one out in the eighth inning, and John Lackey pitching well today into the seventh inning gives up two runs last inning and a couple of hits this inning as he departs. It is two nothing Tigers. Crowd will give him a nice hand though on the way off. Office supply delivery, WB Mason, same day service can't be thrown out. Call by 11.30 a.m. and your order is delivered that same afternoon. WB Mason, the league leader in same day delivery. And John Lackey done after seven and a third innings. Gets the first out of the eighth. It gives up a single to Jackson and a single to Hunter. And in his second and third here, as this call to the bullpen is brought to you on Nessa by New England Ford dealers. And Matt Thornton comes into the game here for the Red Sox. He had been warming up last inning, now gets into the game here in the eighth. His 53rd appearance, numbers combined between Chicago and Boston. He's 0 4, 3.35 earned run average. And he's going to deal with Prince Fielder with runners at second and third and one out. Red Sox will bring the infield in all the way around. And a liner to right. Victorino coming in to make the catch. Tagging at third is Jackson. Throw to the plate is not going to be in time. And the Tigers take a 3 0 lead. So a sacrifice line out to right field for Prince Fielder. And that run will be charged to John Lackey. Fielder pick up, picks up his 93rd RBI of the year. Hit right at Victorino. 
Staggered a little bit, but once he lined it up, still no chance, even with a strong throw, to get a speedy Jackson. Torrey Hunter at second base with two down in the inning, and Victor Martinez, the batter. He's grounded out to second, grounded back to the mound, and single scored a run in the seventh inning. In there for strike one. Thornton bluffs off the backside. Back to the bag at second goes Hunter. You mentioned his combined numbers for Thornton. The numbers have been even better since coming over after the deal, making his 13th appearance since the trade and an ERA of under two. Left side to Drew. For the out, that ends the inning. But the Tigers tack on another run and take a 3 nothing lead after seven and a half. Ace Ticket also has your seats to all Patriots, Bruins, and Celtics games. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Well, Tigers having a good time here. They have a 3 0 advantage and singing Sweet Caroline along the way. Don't see that too often no. from the opponents in Fenway, but <laughs> that's different. They are indeed enjoying themselves. And they're a relaxed ball club right now, I think. A lot of that has to do with the position of the standings. Well, Phil Coe coming in here, the left-hander for the Tigers. His 44th appearance, he is 0-5 with a 5.00 earned run average. At one point this season, was sent back to AAA. There's 30 strikeouts to 16 walks. It was an important part of their bullpen last year and in the past, but this year has been kind of inconsistent. Uh, he's a lefty, and you're going to ask him to get left-handers out. And he's been just okay lefty on lefty. He hasn't been shut down. Owned Ellsbury, who was just one for ten off of him in the past, and he struck him out four times. Oh, impressive day today from Doug Fister, trying to pick up his 12th one of the year. Came in at 11 and seven. Ellsbury leading it off here in the bottom of the eighth. There's strike one. Kobe today has walked, struck out swinging, and flied out to center.
Look at the numbers you were talking about. One for ten with four strikeouts along the way. This little skip in for ball one. Coke was also part of that three team deal, the one in which the Tigers ended up with both Austin Jackson and Max Scherzer. Curtis Granderson going to New York. Arizona, the other team involved in that. On the ground up the middle ranging is Iglesias around the bag at second throws out Ellsbury at first base. Now Wendy's now that's better takes a look at the hot streak Shane Victorino has been on the last two weeks in his last 14 games Victorino has a 476 on base percentage with 14 RBIs and 16 runs scored. His prior 14 games saw his on base percentage just over 300 which is five RBIs and seven runs scored. Victorino has also amassed nine multi hit outings in his last 14 games. Now Phil Koki is one and done comes in gets his man in Jacoby Ellsbury. And now Rondon will make his way in. Tigers have a three nothing lead. Back at Fenway Park, Tigers have a 3 0 lead over the Red Sox. One out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Base is empty. And Shane Victorino stands in. It's a new Tigers pitcher. And Shane will take ball one outside. So Bruce Rondon into the game, his 29th. Appearance of the year, one and two, the 3.67 earned run average, 25 strikeouts to 11 walks. Opponents hitting at 265 against Rondon. Inside for ball two, two and zero. Oh. He has not previously pitched against the Red Sox, and none of these hitters have seen him. And he can bring it easily. You'll see his fastball in triple digits. Start of the year with the Tigers sent out on May the 1st back to Triple A. This one is fouled off the home plate umpire, Eric Cooper, and he was in some pain. It came in at 101. And I don't think that foul tip took much of the velocity off. Oof, right in the collarbone. You're talking a blur. Absolutely no time to react. Well, underneath there, and uh, 
Barely okay. Gonna got it out here. Two and one the count. Victorino foul tipping that last pitch. And a swing and a miss. Two and two. That's the slider. Everything will be hard from Rondon. Fastball slider change. Dustin Pedroia waiting on deck. We had one out here in the last of the eighth. And a swing and a miss. The slider gets him down and away. First strikeout for Rondon. Velocity sometimes will give you margin for error, and this time it helps him expand the zone on Victorino as he swings at one that was not a strike. Nick Insurance, proud sponsor of the Amica Pitch Zone. Two down here in the eighth inning, and Dustin Pedroia, the batter. Pedroia, all for three. He's got it into two double plays today, and it's flied out to the warning track in left. As he takes strike one. Even Hundo thrown from Bruce Rondon. Look out. Pedro almost ducked into that 101 mile an hour fastball. Hundo, is that D.O. speak? Hundo. <laughs> You've got a book on Eck, right? Yeah. You should start one for you. Get my own stuff going. This guy throws a hundo. One one. And it's fouled straight back. Getting a piece. And Beth Israel Diggins Medical Center, the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox, invites you to join the walking club. Sign up today, get a cool wristband. That's everything you need to start a walking program for better health. Find out more at BIDMC.org. Straight back, still one and two. Well, Phil Cook had the first out of the inning on a ground out. They bring in Bruce Rondon. He gets Victorino to strike out. And he's jumped ahead of Dustin Pedroia, one and two. Did he go? No. Since first base umpire Paul Schreiber, and it's two and two. Yeah, good call, not even close. That's one where you're surprised they even asked for the appeal. Yeah. Two and two. And Pedroia stays alive. Defensively, the Red Sox have not mustered much here against the Tigers. Had some early chances, certainly to do some damage in the first two innings. Fister had walked three and hit a batter in the first two innings, and nothing to show for it did the Red Sox, and was able to induce two double plays. Two-two pitch. And a fly ball to left field, down the line and left, and it's off the wall, high off the wall. Pedroia headed for second base. He will get there standing without a problem. And a double there. Almost got out of here to left field for Pedroia. Just missed. Just missed. How about inches? That's how close it was to getting right to that ledge, which is in front of the monster seats. That's gone most places. He tomahawked it. Can't get any closer without getting it out in that spot in the ballpark. 
That's almost close enough where you might ask for another look, but I think with the way the ball caromed down, it was pretty clear that it hit the very top of the wall. And Jeff Jones, a pitching coach out there to talk to Rondon. And the two outs in Madroy in scoring position. Got David Ortiz coming up. More action for the Tigers in their pen. Now Albuquerque had been up earlier. Now stopped warming and Drew Smiley has joined him. Let's stay with Nesson later tonight for Nesson Sports Today presented by People's United Bank. Jameson Coyle and Adam Pellerin bring you everything you need to know about the day in sports. Putting a report from Gillette Stadium as the Pats prepare for their season opener. Final round coverage of the Deutsche Bank Classic. And Mike Salk and Rob Bradford in studio to debate their two sides. All that plus a recap of the game here at Fenway comes your way after our Sox coverage on Nesson Sports Today tonight at 10 p.m. Two down, Pedroia at second base. David Ortiz 0 for 3, but all that was against Doug Fister. And it's strike one. to get through to the backstop and Pedroia will take third base. Will runs it down as Pedroia is now standing at third with two down. Wild pitch charge to Rondo. That was a fastball that got by. Rondon's walk rate's been okay in the majors this year. Throughout his minor league career, it's been an issue at times. He's been a little better this season. Ortiz with a swing and a miss, and that one by him at 102. Wow. Wow is right. It was not a strike. It was below the zone. Looks like more of the gas here. One two pitch. And Ortiz fouls it off, and it was again at 102. Why not? If you're on going, why throw anything else but the fastball anywhere near the zone? The pitch that Pedroia nearly smacked out was not the fastball. Two pitch it is up and away. Yeah, it's two and two. I'm trying to think of the last pitcher I saw here at Fenway Park on the Fenway gun here registered 102. I mean, there's only a handful of guys that can do that in Major League Baseball. You think of Chapman, right? Who can do that, that in a Chapman. consistent basis, but. On Dome with a 2 2 pitch. And a foul down by the shoe tops that time. Obviously, it brings to mind Daniel Bard, but Daniel was more 99, 100, not 102. Third base with two down. Red Sox have already left two base runners at third base. Actually, three runners at third base in this game. 2 2. And Ortiz strikes out at 101. 3 0 Tigers.
Airlines, Subaru of New England, Infinity, and by Sullivan Tire and Auto Centers. They welcome you back to Fenway Park where the Tigers have a 3-0 lead over the Red Sox. Matt Thornton back on the mound for Boston here in the ninth inning is Andy Dirks. Leads it off and sends one to shallow center. In comes Ellsbury to make the catch for the first out of the ninth. Covidian delivering innovative healthcare products across the globe is a proud sponsor of the Red Sox Foundation. One down here in the ninth and it brings up Omar Infante. He has flied out twice to center and walked. Pitch high for ball one to Infante. Infante's had a nice year for them. He's fit in well. Remember the Marlins signed him to a big free agent contract after he was an all-star as more of a utility player. He didn't perform with that new contract, but he's been good for the Tigers. 1-0 is on the ground to short. Stephen True has it. And throws out Infante. Two down. Well, pens are busy. And two outs here in the ninth inning. Ruby De La Rosa up in the Red Sox pen. The other side. Jose Veras was closing games for the Houston Astros earlier this season and was the setup man for Benoit but it is Veras who is up here getting ready for the ninth and what is a safe situation at the moment. So apparently Benoit not available today as the pitch a strike over the outside corner to Don Kelly. Then it's Joaquin Benoit. Had been with the Tampa Bay Rays and the Texas Rangers for most of his career. Benoit signing the three year contract with the Tigers. It was that offseason where a lot of relievers found themselves getting lots of money and lots of years. He was one of them. He really kind of set the market there for a while during that offseason. And it's always a risky proposition investing big bucks in a bullpen unless you've got a proven closer. Up and away and it is one and two to Don Kelly. And we've seen lots of teams over the years spend big trying to fix a bullpen problem and relief pitchers fluctuate so much from year to year. You never quite know. Two balls, two strikes here to Don Kelly with two outs in the ninth inning. In the air to shallow left. Nav is coming in. It's going to fall in front of him for a base hit and get by him. Now heading for second is Kelly. Throw goes to second. He'll be safe. So now it looked like he was going to make that play. Then he kind of backed off and lands in front of him, bounces by him. Kelly, who had slowed up a little bit, then takes off for second base and is there with two outs in the inning. Inside out swing, lots of spin. When it bounced, the spin took it to Nava's left. Then he tried to reach with the bare hand, nothing doing. That allows the extra base. So a single and an error charge to Nava in left. And then allowed Kelly to take second base. He basically stopped at first base. And a half hearted swing from Avila. He's 0 for 3 in the game. He has struck out twice and flied out to center field. One to Avila. 
And a foul off himself that is painful. Could be high on the leg, I think. We'll have to wait and see. Left leg, but he's not moving too gingerly right now, too easily, I should say. They're going to check him out. Man, I think you're right. Right off the knee. Actually above the kneecap. So Bill is all right. Jim Leland and the trainer out there to check on him as we'll get back in the box here. Two outs in the top of the ninth inning. Don Kelly at second base. Tigers trying to add to their three nothing advantage. Meanwhile, the Red Sox will have Nava, Napoli, and Salta Lamacchia scheduled to bat in the bottom of the ninth inning. Fouled off to the left out of play. John Lackey today pitched very well, but he got no run support once again. Ends up going seven and a third innings in his outing. Seven hits, charged with three runs. Matt Thornton allowed an inherited runner to score. He walked a batter and struck out five. And on the hook at the moment. Vila strikes out to end the inning. We head to the bottom of the ninth inning. Daniel Nava will lead it off. In the last half of the ninth inning. Well, no home runs have been hit today by the Red Sox, keeping their season total at 140 with Hess and Hess Express donating $500 to the pediatric trauma program at Boston's Children's Hospital for every Sox home run. Their donation now stands at 70000 Our thanks to Hess and Hess Express committed to helping the cause. Now, well, Daniel Nava will be leading it off here in the bottom of the ninth inning. As the Tigers move on to Jose Veras. His 20 out of 24 and save opportunities when he has been doing the closing. And of course, was a member of the Houston Astros as the closer for the Astros here. Benoit has been doing the closing, but today it is Veras trying to finish off the Red Sox who have a 3 0 advantage. He threw 24 pitches yesterday against the Cleveland Indians, so largely the reason that Benoit apparently is not available today for Jim Leland. And he had pitched in back to back games as well. Nav has been on base three times today a walk, a single, and a double. And he takes ball one. 
And the line for Benoit yesterday about as ugly as they could possibly come. He recorded only one out, gave up four runs earned on a hit and three walks, took the loss to Cleveland. Same spot missing again, 2 and 0. Mike Napoli waiting on deck. Ball three, three and oh. About to finish the thought on Ben while was Mike Avilas. He had a grand slam off him to finish the game yesterday. talked about it earlier this was a problem certainly to begin the year for the Tigers the point where they brought back Jose Valverde who was at home for the first uh, month and a half of the season now but taken all the way take strike one Varis pitched well for Houston the closing for the Astros and closing for a team that's in contention are two very different things Three one from Varis. Yeah, strike two. Zoom battles back. 93 on the fastball. Full count. Double barreled action in the Tigers pen. Al Albuquerque, who's been up at least two times already, along with Drew Smiley in the pen. Three two pitch to Nava. And a ground ball right side and into right field a base hit. Nava is thinking two and he is headed for second base. He will get there standing. Well placed through the right side and Nava gets a double to begin the bottom of the ninth. He couldn't have placed it any better had he rolled it out there himself. And because it was hit softly enough, it rolled to a stop in right field. And therefore, the double. Nava recognized that possibility right out of the box. Just a slight hesitation, but he turns it on quickly before hitting first. So Nava at second base. Nobody out. A good start to the bottom of the ninth inning for Boston. And here's Mike Napoli. Napoli walked in the second inning, struck out in the fourth, walked in the seventh. In there for strike one. Went to the breaking ball that time and a high strike call. Mike Napoli one for three against Varis, but the one was a home run. Tigers scoring twice in the seventh, once in the eighth. Holding on to a 3 0 advantage here in the bottom of the ninth. And he yanked it down and away. Salta Lamacchia waiting on deck. Nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. That side again, and Avila had to go to the backhand that time to his right. Yeah, Vila looks a little slow moving around back there. He caught his hit by the foul ball off his knee. Napoli takes the breaking ball for strike two. 
high curveball that time. I think you could fairly describe Varis as a journeyman type. He closed for the Astros this year, but that's the only time he's ever really been in that role in his career. He's been with many teams after originally coming up with the Yankees. In the dirt, full count. Napoli has already walked twice today. Pitch to Mike Napoli. Popped up. Outside of the infield. Fielder gives way to Infante, who makes the catch for the first out of the ninth. So Napoli retired. And that'll bring up Jared Saltalamacchia. Well, don't forget, Nesson's post game coverage of the Sox begins right after the game with W.B. Mason Extra Innings Live. Tim and TC will break down the highlights, and Jenny will bring you reaction from the players. W.B. Mason, extra innings live. You can't go wrong when you buy right. W.B. Mason. Runner at second, one down for Jared Saltalamacchia. 0 for 3 in the game so far. And she takes strike one. Outside, Salty not chasing, and it's a ball and a strike. Koji Uihara, the Red Sox closer, getting ready in case. <laughs> Outside for ball two, two and one. Everything so far has been away from Salt Lamakia. Elevated the fastball that time at 93 miles an hour and saw to Lamaki you couldn't get it. Came in but came up. Tough to catch up there. Saltalamaki fouls it back on their 94 mile an hour fastball, and it's two and two still. Stephen Drew waiting on deck for the Red Sox here in the inning. Doug Fister started this game today for the Tigers, went seven shutout innings. Phil Coke went a third, Luis Rondon two thirds. And Jose Veras now in pitching the ninth inning. Red Sox do not have a run on the day. Saltalamacchia. Did he go? No. And it's a full count now. Three and two. Some long at bats here for Red Sox hitters in the inning against Veras. Double for Nava. Napoli popped out. And we'll see what happens to Salta Lamacchia. Yeah. 
On the ground right side, Infante to his left, and there are two outs in the ninth as on to third goes Nava. I'll bring up Stephen Drew. He was 0 for 3 today. He's flying out to center, struck out looking, and grounded out to first base. Strike one over the outside corner. That's a pretty good pitch there by Varis right on the outside edge. If we get far enough, Mike Carp has come out on deck to bat for Will Middlebrooks. And the breaking ball in there for strike two. A little wiggle in that curveball, and it's 0 2. Back door just got the edge, almost the same spot as the fastball before, but got there in a very different fashion. Robert, third base, two down in the ninth. Who <laughs> takes ball one down and in? The Sox have been stymied all afternoon. They have left seven men on base through the first eight. They got Nob at third base with two down. Here's a one two pitch to Stephen Drew. And Drew strikes out, and the Tigers beat the Red Sox in the first game of the series. And a very frustrating game today for the Red Sox as they are shut out by the Detroit Tigers in game one of the series. And Tom Karen, much different from what we saw. For the Red Sox against the White Sox offensively couldn't get it done today against Detroit.